Okay, Steve-O, let me fast forward. We've talked a lot about the past. Where is Steve-O now? And for me, that, mm-hmm. that, that can be a nice mm-hmm. parting shot. Yes. Well, for me right now, um, I've gotten to a place where um, I have at least three companies that are all doing things independently. And as a result of that, I'm able to at least have people do different duties. But I'm still very heavily invested especially in music, in film, and in content production, eh? content development, even though a lot of it is being done either for NGO mm. or for corporate work. Yeah? But as, 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 for an example, this year, I produced an entire rap album. Yeah? Rap? Yes, I have a hip-hop album that I did for a guy called Solodified. Yeah? yeah. It's 13 songs and it's, it's, it's a dope record. Solo, solo? Yes. So long did yeah, I've done a rap album, 13, 13 <laughs> songs, and it's and it's tight. It's on iTunes, it's on it's on Tidal, it's on everything, yeah. I did mastering for Dana Seda's new album. I did the mix, yeah. I did the mix and the master for his entire record, um, together with the Max. And so I'm still basically in music. I'm back, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm still working. I'm still a practitioner in the music industry, yeah. Um, and Solo, you know, we've had a long history with him because he was also in a group back then that I produced that was called Minority. Yes. Yeah. And Solo, what was the, the, that she called? Naliaka. Naliaka. Yes. Nali who moved into into media. Yes. Like Pulse and... Correct. Yeah. And, and, and Matthew who, who who's in Uganda now. So we, we have, a, have a long running history that a lot of people I still work with. I do a lot of mastering work. Um, I still produce music. Um, though I am heavily invested in film, yeah, and looking for opportunities to to really push the film business a lot further, and I still have a very huge interest in content creation, yeah, especially moving in the direction of streaming, because mm. streaming now is where we are going, yeah. yeah? So where we are, yeah, and in the next five years, streaming will no longer be novelty in Kenya, yeah. It's gonna be something that everybody is gonna be able to do. Every TV will be smart, and nobody will have an aerial. Yeah. Mm. So I, I want to again be properly positioned for when that time comes. Yeah. Um, reality documentaries, um, biopics, um, historical documentaries, movies, mm. things that things that can tell our stories. There's there's too many stories in Kenya, as you can see. Too uh, many. There's too many stories. If 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 we sit down with two or three more people. And, and, and interview them about their musical history, you'll get again hours another, of another content. Another three-hour documentary. <laughs> exactly. So I believe there's so much to be, to be told. There's so much music to be produced. Huh? There's so much of our culture. There's so much of, of positive material huh? that the world needs. You know, like my pastor always says, huh? that uh, if there's, if, uh, according, to, according to research, it has been proven that the one thing the world is looking for the most in 2018, 2019 and moving forward is hope. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Aspiration. Hope, hope is what is lacking and, and everybody is trying to look for it in everywhere else that they think it's available. Yeah. And as long as we can provide hope, yeah, as long as we can continue to mentor the generations to come, yeah? Because let's face it, Bana, producers are dope nerds. We were dope, but there's dope young kids right now who can really make good music. Video directors are dope right now, you know? It's not something that we can, we can shy away from. It is what it is, yeah? And we need, to, we need to nurture them. We need to give them platforms, yeah? These days, I take pleasure in just collaborating and being in the back, yeah? Mm. I, I enjoy just facilitating, yeah? Because people need to come up, people need to learn, yeah and because like what we've talked about today will help somebody somewhere understand that there is hope eh? exactly. that there's possibility that you can go from deleting your father's steps <laughs> to to having three media companies you know yeah. what we're trying to sell is hope yeah we're trying, to, we're trying to help people understand that this business is great it's not slowing down it's only getting better it's getting bigger. bigger yeah and there's and a more lot lucrative. of hope yes and there's a lot of stories to be told and there's a lot of positivity that can be created to really make this world a better place through you and I, what we do, what we say, and how we impact everybody else. So for me, it's, it's, I really hope that at the end of the day, somebody will listen to this story, somebody will be touched, yeah? Somebody who has been dilly-dallying, some teenage kid somewhere, mm. who was where I was when I was used to shukat near a stadium, to walk, to sit at a reception and not know that I'm going to 
be allowed in well, can know that there's hope. You know what I'm saying? And and also, I want to add this because, again, I'm so glad I know you because I I know you. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that that keeps popping up into my head. Part of what you said in this journey as we've been uh, having this conversation was that you had a love for music. What people don't know is that you then went and recorded a full solo album. Yes. Let's talk about that a bit. My solo album. It was an There's album. There's a song I used to love in that thing. What was it called? I wonder. The, it, 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 it had that beat which was like cheesy and fuck it's so funny you mentioned Dana Seda. Yeah. Cheesy and Nema. Uh-huh. Then there's a song that you 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 Mwambie. Yes. <laughs> you see, you see, I even remember oh, this, this is an interesting comment. I don't even know how we did how how we, yeah. how we passed over this. Generally, like I I went back to that point in my life where I I first wanted to be, yeah? Hmm. Cuz growing up me what I knew I wanted to be was a singer, yeah? But then the production thing overtook. Hmm. But at one point because now I had a studio and I had time, I just started toying around with the idea of let me write some songs and record, yeah? Because an album is something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. So here was my opportunity and there was the time, I was like, let me, let me, let me just work by myself and produce myself, basically. Let me, let me, let me, record produce, yourself, let me produce myself and, and record myself and mix and master myself for the fun of it. And I ended up doing 13 songs. Now, I didn't release it, unfortunately. Ah, it's on it's, on it's it's on some platforms, but it didn't go mainstream. Because my feeling was at that point in time, I wanted to focus more on being a producer because I knew if I had to become an artist, it, it would probably have to take over yeah. whatever I needed to do moving forward. Because it's, it's crazy if you if you come out and maybe it works out well, and then after that there's the demand. So. I'll be honest, I, I kind of shied away from the idea of actually coming out as an artist um, by the time this record was done. I mean, as we're doing the record, it was basically a pet project. Yeah. yeah. It was a pet project that I just wanted to... It was to, a bucket list project. Yes, it was, it was that kind of thing. It had some nice songs. I still love it. I put it on some platforms though. It's on uh, MySpace and a few other places here and there, yeah? Boss, you've said MySpace. Yeah. They are too old. So... <laughs> You so, said, oh my, <laughs> just said my space. so I've never really uh, put it out like the way I should have, but I'm considering it because it's just, still it's what, still what, fresh yeah, music. What do you have to yeah, lose? It's still yeah. fresh music, and I think actually I need to put it out. Yeah, it's, but it's, also it's, it's, I, it's, it's, I, it's I, I understand the feeling. You see, what I love about what you've said, and this is important to say, sometimes you just do music for yourself. Yeah. You know, just yeah. for you to tick that thing that I wanted to do this yeah. and I did this. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. So for me that's but that Mwambia song, we have to play it we'll, on this thing. We'll put in it fact, out. here is the Mwambia song right now. <laughs> Listen to a sample. <laughs> that job was too good. Oh. Okay, Steve Last thing, parting yeah. shot. Mm-hmm. Parting shot. What do you want me to say? What do you want to talk about the parting no, shot? No, parting shot is just like yo. Anybody watching this, young, mm-hmm. old, guys who've been in the industry for longer than you, guys who've been there yeah. for half your time, guys who've just joined the industry. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine if somebody just landed on this and they have one minute to hear you say. Mm-hmm. What would you say? My parting shot from you is the power of connection. The dots connect. Mm-hmm. In fact, if you, in this interview, I think I've said like four times, yeah. and guys may diss me in the comments, I don't care. But yeah. the truth be told, what I've learned about your thing is two things. The dots connect mm. and they still you're a hard worker. And hard worker isn't it's it's consistency, it's faith stepping out be beyond you've redefined my version of what I think a hard worker. It's yeah. sacrifice, yeah. it's it's living state, it's going to that comp every day during your lunch break. It's actually working at a place to which mm-hmm. flipping burgers mm-hmm. it's buying equipment it's it's fedexing things it's mm-hmm. getting in front of Chris Kirubi it's it's learning how to play keyboards without ever going to school I mean your whole story I'm just like yo this guy is it's going to see Ted and bugging him with chips yeah, you know exactly it's finding a place in rap community even though you're not a rapper yes it's doing an album so for me 
that's what I felt of this story. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. so glad that when somebody, when a millennial can come up to me right now and ask me, what's, how do, how do I work? I can be able to tell them, go and watch The Playhouse. Mm-hmm. Go and watch Steve Ominde, mm-hmm. The Playhouse, to understand how to make it in life. Yeah. Not to arrive, because yes. you never arrive. Yes. And you also arrive. Correct. I know that's a quad my in what I've said. Yes. But that's what I felt for your story. I'm just like, yo. I think part in short. Mm. Hey, I've given my part in short. No. Part in short is heavy, man. Baka, I don't know what to say. Anyway, I'm saying, you know, I think everybody, everybody has something that they're given, naturally and for free, yeah. And it doesn't always have to be music or or artistic talent. It could be many things, yeah. And I think what comes together with what God gives you is reminders like notifications like god god just keeps sending notifications he just keeps reminding you of what he wants you to do on this earth eh? mm. and you either choose to ignore it or or find a way to get it done and i think my story really is just a question of, of god is just placing you know the way the way you 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 lead a chicken to a trap by just putting for it food yeah there's just something god kept kept leading me to do and telling me you need to really do it and the, and it's just a question of because if we look back at the time when we were the crisscross kids mm. in the estate wearing oversized clothes and trying to be fancy i was not alone mm. we were maybe five ten kids who were all able to do that comfortably yeah but today from that crisscross generation to where I am today, there's been a lot of me walking alone without my crisscross boys. Mm. Yeah. And basically, what is going to keep you walking at the end of the day is just faith. Eh? Faith and ability to see possibility of what you want happening. Seeing the end from the beginning. Mm. Yeah. So many times when, when, when I'd go to that music store in Atlanta, I knew one day I'll have those things. I didn't have $10. But I knew one day those things I'll have them at my disposal. I'll not have to go there on a lunch break, yeah? And I'll not have to work in a in a showroom, yeah? It was just faith, yeah? When I watched Bless My Room, I knew one day I wanted to make that kind of a video. I didn't know how on earth it was going to happen. But just the faith, uh, the persistence to keep going because the the glam of the entertainment industry fades out very quickly when you get into it. Eh? Mm. It's it's so beautiful from the outside. I've never seen an industry more beautiful from the outside <laughs> than entertainment. From the outside, when you tell a guy I'm a producer, everybody just fancies you. Oh, you can dress the way you like. You don't have to wake up at at at, at six in the morning to go to an office. And it's the exact opposite of that. You actually don't sleep. Uh, everybody's like, oh, if, like, if Steve, if you, want, if you want to go to Mombasa, you can just jump on a. On, for the on, record, on, the on time a... now is 1:40 a.m. Wow, we've, it's pretty it's, we've, producer life. <laughs> yeah, this is producer life, you know. So people are like, yeah, you, 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 you're free. You can do what you like, and the answer is no, you can't. You actually work more. You actually have to do more, because at the end of the day, you, you, you don't have anything except your work and your word. Yeah. And so people who come with the attitude of, you know what, I'm hot. Being hot doesn't mean anything anymore in this business. It's, it's a lot to do with how much you're going to put in, mm-hmm. how much you're willing to sacrifice, how much work you're suppo- you want to put in. Yeah? Um, and then just networking and just allowing things to happen organically. Yeah? Um, being open to ideas, being open to to suggestions, you know, collaborating. Collaboration is one of the most powerful things in any industry, live alone in entertainment, you know. If you understand and, and value the power of collaboration, artists who work alone generally hardly go very far. Mm. Yeah. So it's really, for me, I would just say at the end of the day, this story, I hope and I believe is going to encourage somebody. Yeah. When we started out, there was nobody to encourage us. We had no direction. Mm. There was nobody to tell us what to Just do. Just limit X. Yes. Who are there for a day. Yes. <laughs> there was nobody to tell you you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. Yeah. So today, I would like to be available yeah, for people who need to know whether they're doing it right or doing it wrong so that we can guide them. 
yeah because in our times it was trial and error it was mistake after mistake it was failure after failure before we could get anywhere so really at the end of the day my parting shot to whoever is watching this and whoever wants to to be encouraged and 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 and, and to do what we do is that number one it's possible um number two there's there, there's people who can help you walk through it huh? and and just keep at it it's not a bed of roses it's not gonna be everything you see it to be at the beginning but you just keep at it one day the world is gonna listen to your voice and you'll realize that it actually works three three things that i've gotten and after this i'm pressing the stop button one believe in the impossible two trust the unknown three see the invisible precisely